You know, Madam Chair, I wonder if I could speak during um, matters from agency members. You want us to be open? Yeah. Sure. I, I, before Mr. Owens leaves or Mr. Ville leaves, I want to address something that was said at oral communications. You know, when uh, Dina Wynn does something good, I praise her and stand up for her. And But uh, some comments were made about Janet Wynn that I want to respond to. Uh, the comment was made by Mr. Owens that Janet Wynn did not show up for the AARP candidates forum because she had another meeting, and that was belittled. Well, AARP set their candidates forum for the race for the Board of Supervisors at a time when the Board of Supervisors was meeting. So Janet Wynn did not just go to some made-up meeting. She was at the Board of Supervisors meeting doing her job as a supervisor. Uh, and I would suggest to organizations that if you want to set up a uh, candidate's forum or candidate's debate, try to set it at a time when the incumbent office holder is not having a meeting for the incumbent office. If you were going to, and that's a lesson for if you have a forum for city council candidates this fall, don't set it at the same time that the city council is meeting. So I just wanted to say that um, in response to some of the comments. Okay. Uh, in, uh, uh, no. Okay, I'll uh, reconvene the uh, Garden Grove Sanitary District meeting, and we'll go to number two consent items. Yes, you have the minutes for uh, the meeting of April 22nd, 2008. Recommend Move two. approval. <gasps> second. Okay, motion second, call for the vote. Motion received for yes votes. 3A, public hearing. Yes, Mr. President, 3A is a public hearing. It's a protest hearing regarding the proposed adjustment to the solid waste collection and disposal rates, and A.J. Holman is here to give the staff report on this item. Good evening, Board of Directors. In accordance with Article 7 of the current Solid Waste Collection and Disposal Service Agreement, Garden Grove Disposal has submitted its request for consumer price index rate adjustment for solid waste collection and disposal services. A provision of the agreement provides for an annual rate adjustment in accordance with changes to the CPI up to a maximum of 5%. The rate adjustments are to offset costs associated with the collection, disposal, and recycling services provided by Garden Grove Disposal in fiscal year 2007-2008. The increase for fiscal year 08 and 09 is 3.92%. Subsequent adjustments will be in accordance with the changes in the CPI up to 5% maximum annually. In the absence of a change in the landfill gate fees or some other unusual circumstances, these should be the only required solid waste collection and disposal rate adjustments through 2014. In accordance with Proposition 218, 45 days prior to public hearing, the district mailed notices regarding the proposed rate increase to all the owners of record of affected real property parcels as they appear on the latest equalized assessment tax roll and to the tenants of the affected parcels. There are 38,164 parcels of real property affected by the rate adjustments. As an example, regular residential solid waste collection will increase from $18.92 per month to $19.66 per month, which is an increase of 74 cents. As of this afternoon, the city clerk has received 77 written protests. In the absence of a majority protest, the rate adjustments will be implemented as set forth in the agreement. It is recommended that the Board of Directors, one, conduct a public hearing regarding proposed adjustments to solid waste collection and disposal rates, and two, request a city clerk to determine whether a majority protest exists. This concludes my report. I'm available to answer questions. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Mr. Uh, Rosen. Uh, you got 77 protests. What's the universe of, of uh, people who can file protests? There's a figure in the report. There are 38,164 affected real property parcels. Is it a uh, protest per parcel? Per, pro per parcel. It is. If somebody owns two parcels, do they get two protests? Yes, they do. What if the city protested? How many parcels do we own? I'll have to get that number for you. And more than 100? I don't believe more than 100. I'll have to get that number for you. Okay. And if there's 30, I'm going to round off, if there's 38,000 
parcels, then there'd have to be 19,001 protests to stop the rate increase? 16,000 around there, yes. 16,000? Yes. Okay. And otherwise, the council has no authority to uh, stop the increase? That is correct, sir. So our sole function here is to count whether there were 16,000 protests or not? Yes. And what's the point of the public hearing then? Um, okay, okay, it, it, it all follows. Excuse me. Hold on, and and you'll get an explanation, please. The uh, the public hearing is required uh, pursuant to Proposition 218, which says that if there's a rate adjustment for property related fees, which this is now considered a property related fee under a relatively recent Supreme Court case, that we're required to hold this public hearing, and the majority protest uh, procedures apply. Okay, so but unless 16,000 people get up and protest, unless, there's nothing we do. Unless a majority of the owners of the affected parcels, and that in this case would be something over 19,000 protests, the agreement uh, between Garden Grove Disposal and the city, the franchise waste hauling agreement, provides for these rates to be implemented. Okay, so there's no action we take. That's correct. Okay. What if, okay, wait a second. You're, you're, if you fill out a card, you'll be given the opportunity to speak. What if there were a majority of protests? Then what happens? Then under Proposition 218, the uh, rate increase would not go into effect. And that issue, in terms of a property-related fee, has not happened, to my knowledge, in the state. So to the extent that there is a an agreement in place, which would be upset by that, that issue hasn't come before the courts. Okay, any other questions for staff? Okay, I'll open up the uh, public hearing. Bob Owens. Yeah. Okay, Bob, if you'll turn the mic a little bit away from you. I don't upset nobody. Everybody here? Yeah. You know, nobody's going to go to sleep. I have a question. If he's turning the mic away, does that mean he's not? Yeah. And we can hear him. But will he be heard on TV? I'm sure. <laughs> oh, then you should, you should talk into the microphone. Okay, then talk a little softer if you want to be heard okay. on TV. Oh, to, to Rosen's uh, remark about Janet Wynn. Look, the only thing I know is she didn't leave no message. She didn't let the message. She'd have been in the supervisor meeting or whatever. Oh, okay. To me, that would have been fine. This is a sand district. Come on. I man. understand, but Thank I want you. to answer. You can do it in the next uh, now, council meeting. When you, you, you say you want to raise the trash from, from, or from 1892 to 1966, right? That might not be a lot of money to some, you know, and to some it is. But every increase that we had, you know, I can't go to my employer and tell them to juice my pension up 3%. Right, Matty? Huh? I can't do that. I can't go and say, juice my Social Security up 3%. Huh? I can't tell my health carrier to, you know, keep my health benefits the way they are. I can't tell Medicare to keep my uh, premiums what they are. I, you know, I can't do that. No, they can't either, you know. So when the, the, the city comes up and says, well, we've got to have a, 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 a rate increase. I remember when they took over the West End, right? Uh, what was that name that plant? What was the name that trash? What was the name? The West End. Huh? Midway City. Midway City. I come down to the city uh, city hall, and I went up the, to the city manager's office, and I said, "Well, she said, what do you want?" I said, "I want to talk about the the, the trash. I'll leave it midway, you know." Well, you know what you have. Well, I said, "I really don't know what why what what the reason is," you know, and she says, "Well, city manager might have a little time for you." He said, "I, I don't know." I said, "Well," I, I said, "You got a cup of coffee?" She said, this ain't Starbucks. I said, ain't? No. Oh. I said, well, okay. So I went down, got a cup of coffee, that fast food over there, right? Come back. And then I looked, and it wasn't you, Maddie. I don't remember who it was. I look inside, and there's coffee, and there's rolls. And there's old fat, some fat belly developers walking in there, right? I know my, the cup of coffee they didn't give me caused the, the, the increase in trash because I never got no coffee. So the next time I came down, three days later, I had a thermos, huh? And I was walking around. I said, here's my coffee. 
I don't want to uh, raise any rates in this generous city hall here. You know what I mean? See, on the trash increase. But the, but the bottom line is this. We live on a budget. Okay? I live on a budget. And most people live on a budget. I don't intend to go out on the street because this city can't run their finances. All right? I, you ain't going to get me out there. I don't like you that well. Okay? I can't tell my employer, I can't tell Social Security, and I can't tell Medicare. Okay? Hey, that's what they're giving me. You like it, take it. I get a 4 or 5% increase in my pension and in Social Security. Inflation goes up 6%, 7%. They're gorking me at the, at the pump. Huh? They're gorking me at the pump at 70 years old. Huh? They're gorking me in my retirement. They're gorking me to my living style. Huh? And everybody else said, hey, this is great. You know what I mean? Well, the increase, we just pass it on. It ain't bad. Well, if you got a, if you, if you got a two million dollars, or if you got a big paying job, hey, but we can't pass this increase on. How many more are you going to give us? How many more increases are you going to give us? We're right here at the just beginning. And we got the, the water. We got this. We got that. You know, I'm getting gorked everywhere I go. Huh? I, I, I express my opinion in the, in the restaurant, I get gorked, but I'm nice. I, I don't say nothing, see? Go to hell, that's what I'm going to tell them from now on. See? And, and they said I pick on Maddie because I want to send him to Iraq. How can I pick on Maddie? He's the chief executive officer. Okay. He's got the police and the fire department and all city hall behind him. I'm just Bobby, a, you got about a, a minute left. Down there. Bob, you got a minute or less left, so make it count. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of my American citizen getting gorked. And my government sent me down the tube. Huh? And we told him to shut up. You know what I mean? And everybody else coming over here and get what they want. You know? And we're getting gorked. That's what I don't like. Wait a minute, I can't call nobody. Who am I going to call? Am I going to call my pastor? What am I going to do? What are you going to go work me on the street? You ain't put me on the street. Thank you, Bob. Verlin Lambert. Well, I'm Verlin Lambert of Marble Place. I've lived here 52 years. And... I guess I'm up here just to vent, since I don't have 18,000 people behind me. But, so I'm going to vent anyway. This grandma is on a fixed income, was under the impression that part of the recycling would cover some of the trash services. I know I, know I should have known better. Yes, the costs have gone up. I probably pay more at the pump than they do, so that's a wash. You know who keep you know who keeps reminding us that the hotels are doing so great they bring in twelve million, but he never tells us where the twelve million goes. This is a, if this hike goes through, I want new trash bins because they've squeezed, squeezed the life out of mine. My generation has this saying, if you watch your pennies, your do dollars take care of themselves. Just think, 25 cents a week, one dollar a month, out of every recycle bin, how many recycle bins you pick up a week? 38,164 times 12, that's 457,968. Think about it. As stated, 40K comes back to the foundation. 20 goes to our prepaid free concerts. 
I would like to see an atomized statement where the other 20 goes. I think I would be entitled to that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Charles Mitchell. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council and the sanitary district. My name is Charles Mitchell. I'm currently the chairman of the Sanitary Advisory Commission. Our commission listened to a lot of the information regarding the increase in the rates and the justification for it. As Verla pointed out, the company that does our trash hauling does recycling. And there's $40,000 that comes back to the city. And 20000 of that pays for the free concerts in the city for the residents. Well, the free concerts are a nice thing to have. Unfortunately, with the price of gas going up, a lot of our residents don't feel they can afford to pay for the gas to drive to those concerts. Maybe it might be more practical if that 20000 for the concerts and the other 20000 we don't know about would be put back into lowering the rates that the people pay. Now, I realize that hauling trash is costly, particularly with the cost of fuel going up. But I am a little bit concerned looking at the data on this and the rate increases no more than 5% per year as specified by Proposition 218. However, I don't think that the less than 5% per year is going to absorb the increase in costs for the fuel. And I would like to know if there is a prospect within the next year or so of a ballot measure being put on the ballot for a major increase in the cost of trash hauling that we are not hearing about right now. Thank you. Thank you. Robin Macario. Good evening, Council. Um, Council Member Rosen, I just want to appreciate the fact that you've flushed out um, the, the news that, in fact, what, that our elected officials don't really have much say um, is disappointing, to say the least. I mean, that's why we have an elected body, so that they can speak on our behalf to realize um, at the public hearing that what our elected officials and what we have to say is uh, less than um, uh, less than what, what's going to be needed to have any impact is certainly disappointing. I wanted to uh, bring up just a couple of comments, because that's all they'll be at this point. Um, there may be some flexibility in sort of adjusting the terms of this particular agreement. To carry this out to 2014, giving them six years at this rate, perhaps you do have some say in altering those terms, the length of the terms anyway, to, re, to be able to readjust or be able to look at this at a later date. Um, I also wanted to address the fact that there seems to be a decided lack of enforcement in the trash diggers that are stealing from our recycle bins. And um, so that's definitely something that we as a city and, and council um, ha can have some say if we need to increase the fines for these trash diggers. Um, I think that that's certainly that you, something you should definitely look into because I'm quite frankly sick of seeing the, the uh, carts come down digging through my trash. Um, I'm also concerned about the burden, which um, Bob Owen and Verla have already addressed, with particularly our senior citizens. They're not receiving any increases. We're all feeling the impacts of uh, increased um, all of the rates. Um, last year, we um, had to endure a 40% rate increase for water. And in the middle of this summer, we will be enduring a, an additional 20% increase. And then you're adding now, you're looking at you know nearly 4% increase for for trash. Now, why do they call it solid waste? I mean, that's not even a euphemism for trash. That's, oh, that's a silly way to, to put that. The other, um, there should be some sort of altern alternate, um, alternatives flushed out. And in other words, sort of asking the trash company to, um, at this point, all of our multi-unit uh, complexes, be they apartments or condominiums, 
have no recycling whatsoever. It all gets put in the dumpster, all gets put into the, uh, the trash dump. There's no recycling being done to date for any of the multi-family multi complexes. So that's something that I think that we definitely could ask for as a city council, that that could be part of the agreement, that, look, we're, we're prepared to do that. We would like to see some recycles go into our multi-unit complexes. Now, that would have been addressed at the state level with Assembly Bill 548, which was presented by uh, Assemblyman Lloyd Levine a uh, few months ago. It was passed by both houses, and unfortunately, uh, Governor Schwarzenegger saw fit to veto this bill, which would have required the entire state to put some kind of recycle bins for all of the multi-unit complexes. It just makes sense to divert more from our dumps. It would certainly be closer for the trash trucks to bring these recycled goods to the recycling center, which is much closer than bringing it to the county dump. You're going to save in that way, as well as whatever you do obtain. I know that when I take my uh, aluminum to now be recycled, you're getting a better rate for uh, recycled cans and glass and everything else. So there's got to be some kind of alternates that we can look at to try and offset some of these costs that are being asked of us. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Tony Flores. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff. I'm Tony Flores. <clears throat> Most of the folks, I, I guess, are, have read some of my uh, opinions in the journal. And, and I'll go ahead and protest it, even though I fully understand that at this point it's, it's, it's going to go through uh, without the, uh, the large number of folks needed, 19,000 plus. So I understand that. But what I did was I, I also made copies of uh, my presentation. Hope you all received a copy of it. Okay, and the reason I did that was so you can see why I'm asking the questions that I'm asking. Although I understand we don't have the, the, the numbers in protest, my thought process was based on the information that I have in front of me, that you have in front of you, and I hope I can explain it. Uh, of course, the, the first one, the first point I'm making is the increase that's going to be based on the Consumer Price Index, which is uh, pages 1A through 1B. Uh, point 2, pages uh, 2A through 2C, talks about the the rate and how it's how it's uh, computed uh, from 2002 the base uh, rate is 1540 multiplied against the CPI the consumer price index at this point as we're paying 1892 currently right now we've already increased to 22.89 percent almost 23 percent since 2002 I talk about the year 2002 um, because at that point we've managed to meet the requirements of AB 939, which is the diversion away from the trash fill, excuse me, the landfills. And also, too, since we've been meeting that requirement, and according to the information that I have in uh, pages 4A through 4E, we talk about the, uh, the uh, uh, California Integrated Waste Management Board that verifies we're at 52 percent, I believe, well, which is great, and that's fine and dandy. But if you look at page... Um, pages 4C through 4D, this is on city letterhead. I had written to the city in 2002 and in 2004 to ask how much money we were making from our recyclables, and I have not yet received that information. And we already have it. I just haven't been given that information, so I, I still have that question pending. As far as the, the trash diggers, and here's another interesting point. As far as the trash diggers going through the recyclable portions of it, if you look at page 4B, uh, that clearly says that once the trash or recyclables or whatever are in those containers, it becomes a property of the trash hauler. So technically, they would be the victim, not necessarily the city. And I'm not sure how that could be enforced or how it's enforceable uh, because they would have to prosecute. So that's an interesting point as well. Uh, as we move into uh, point number five or pages 5A um, through 5H, here we have the Garden Grove Disposal, um, Termina Industries, Division of Republic Services, uh, all kind of wrapped up in one. The executive director happens to be the, the same person who's uh, the person reporting to the California Integrated Waste Management Board and is also the treasurer of the Garden Grove Community Foundation. And that's what brings up, I believe it's page, um, excuse me, 5... 5F. And I'm going to read this uh, because I think there might be some misinterpretation of it, but this is the actual out of the contract, uh, 8.2 on page 5F. 
Contractor analysts shall contribute a total sum of $40,000 for community uses. These funds will be allocated as follows. One, $20,000 to the Garden Grove Foundation. I'm assuming that's the Garden Grove Community Foundation. Twenty, another, the remaining $20,000 shall be donated by contractor at its discretion by cash contribution or in-kind services as determined by the contractor. I'm not quite sure what that means. I don't know where that's defined, but I think we'd like to see what we're talking about because it appears to be a violation of the portion of the contract 16.4 as well as California Constitution Article 13D with the subsections that basically says, and let me read that so I'm not misquoting anyone. Revenues derived from the fee or charge shall not exceed the funds required to provide the property related service. Revenues derived from the fee or charge shall not be used for any other purpose other than that for which the fee or charge was imposed. And let me jump to item number six, or page six, actually. The Midway City Sanitation District is currently charging $1,475 for their monthly curbside trash service and is not, con not going to consider an increase until July of 2009. That's on page 6A. The Garden Grove, Community, uh, Garden Grove Sanitary District is currently charging $1,892, and we're looking at increasing our, our service. Um, so I think we, we need to take a look. At, and again, I fully understand that the protest is basically moot at this point. But uh, touching on, on Mr. Uh, Jones's letter, um, <laughs> spending in Garden Grove, which I think is a great idea, but at this rate, the, the, our, our stimulus checks eventually, at least when I start reaching that retirement age, uh, well, I'd love to, to spend it on, on things in Garden Grove and have fun. I'm going to be spending it on, on fees, charges, and assessments, I fear. So let's please take a look at this. Uh, respectfully submitted. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Gerald Hannon. My name is Gerald Hannon. I'm here for the trash pickup. Uh, the problem I have now is it's a daily occurrence. I own two houses in Garden Grove now, two separate neighborhoods. I have uh, been witnessed, everybody I'm sure in the council chambers, how big a Dodge Ram pickup is. The morning dropping my kids off to Stanford School, I noticed a Dodge Ram pickup with at least 10 or 15 black plastic trash bands, bags full to the brim in the back of the pickup. The pickup is moving down the street with another lady behind it unfurling another plastic trash bag. Uh, aluminum cans now, your council, is almost eight cents a can. I don't know where the $40,000 comes from, but I'm sure it comes pretty quick if you're picking up 38,000 people's trash a week. That $40,000 comes pretty quick to the sanitation district. I have now in my neighborhood the people that are collecting the trash out of the trash recyclables are tipping the green trash cans down, reaching in the recyclable bins, and emptying the contents of wine bottles, beer bottles, Coke bottles, whatever it be. I happen to find out now that my next door neighbor is a wine connoisseur. I'm sure not to his pleasure. Uh, I've been I've been after this for years now. Before I got divorced in my, in my original neighborhood to the neighborhood I've moved at now, I've contacted the trash pickup. They refuse to do anything because if they physically go out and, and with an altercation with those people, they'll get sued. I understand that. I've called the police. They say they will report that right below murder, bank robbery, rape. So by the time they get out, to the, the, the people are long gone. Uh, it, the, the city attorney years ago told me it's not worth his time to prosecute by the time he sends police out there to get them, even arrest them if they are out there, it costs too much to prosecute, the fine is not enough maybe a, a, an answer is a, a, a fine I don't know, uh, I watch a lot of cops on TV and I notice all the uh, Crack dealers that they that they pull over or the people that are walking on the street that they're arresting for crack dealing, they always take the guy's money. Now, technically, they really don't know whether the guy has a job and that money was used or gotten by the selling of the crack. Maybe if you started to go after these people's assets, if they have any assets, but at eight cents a can... I'm a pretty physical able person now. If I put my mind to it, 
I very well could make $100 a day very easily collecting cans out of trash cans. Use your math. Five days a week, that's $500 a week. That's $2,000 a month. Bob, that'll, that'll buy you pretty much any increase that you want. Uh, Harry mentioned his uh, car goes down to 13 cents a uh, gallon, his fuel cost or whatever. At 8 cents a can, if he collected 200 cans a day, he could drive 200 miles that would only cost him 8 cents a mile or 5 cents a mile, excuse me. There's a lot of money being pilfered out of these recyclables, and it, it's a good contract if you can get it. Boy, I wish I had a gig like that to where you have to have 19,000 people vote on something. That, that would be wonderful. It's, things aren't going to happen like that out in the real world. They just don't happen. Thanks for your time. Thank you. David Ramsey. David Ramsey. Okay, Leland Sisk. Good evening. My name is Leland Sisk. <clears throat> My wife and I proudly own the residence at 11432 Marin Way. And uh, I understand price increases and cost increases are a fact of life. And I'm not sure we can do anything about this proposal at this point in time. But there's one phrase in this paragraph that bothers me, and I'd like to know if anyone can address this for me. In the agreement here, it says, the rate for that year may be lower. May be lower. It doesn't say it has to. For example, if the consumer price index is only 1%, um, am I to believe that there's only going to be a 1% increase in the trash rates? Trust me, I've worked for the federal government for 35 years. I've never known any governmental agency at any level to look up and say, you know what, we're good, we got enough money. So if the consumer price index is only 1%, what assurance do we have that they're not going to go ahead and say, you know what, we need the whole 5% because we're going to do this with it. I don't even know if that can be changed at this point in time. But uh, I do okay. wish someone would go look ahead into it. Mr. Manager. Yeah, I think we just verified that it is the CPI. So if the CPI is 1%, then that's, that's not what this says. It says it may be lower. It doesn't say it's exactly tied to it. It says it may be. That's the well, Read it. It's right here. Um, it's, I, it says it may be lower. It doesn't say it shall be lower. If I may, yes, I, believe, I believe what you're referring to is the notice. That's not the agreement with the uh, waste franchise hauler. That's the notice that was sent out to the public to indicate that pursuant to the agreement, the agreement specifically provides that the rate increase will be according to the CPI up to a maximum of 5 percent per year. In the notice, that is just simply to reflect that although the maximum may be 5 percent, it may be lower if the CPI is lower. Okay, but that's the word that causes me great concern. Maybe. It doesn't say it shall be lower. It shall be directly tied mm -hmm. to the if, CPI. It doesn't say that. If, if so, the CPI you know, is lower, the rate increase will be lower in future years. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Virgil Judd. My name is Virgil Judd. Uh, I'm a Retired CPA, lived in Garden Grove for 40 years. I noticed on your uh, proposal here that there's a lack of uh, zoning uh, in the rate proposal. Uh, when I speak of zoning, uh, you have R1, R2, and R3, where single family versus multifamily. Uh, I think it's logical that when you have multi multifamily occupancy, you're going to have much more uh, waste. And I wonder if that could be included in the agreement to take into consideration the uh, single family zoning versus multi family zoning, where you have seven and eight families living in one house. That equates to a lot of trash. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dale Urbis, Herbs. 
before that, maybe we can respond to that comment. This uh, trash contract, this is for single family homes? Mr. Mayor, this applies to single family residential and commercial as well. No, but did you mean multiple families living in a single family home? Exactly. Okay, so, okay, that's what he's talking about overcrowding in homes, paying the same rate as a single. The amount of trash generated a home would be what was uh, generated would have to fill the designated containers that are given. So if there's more people living in the house and more trash is generated, they're going to have to add another container to uh, uh, take care of that trash, which is an additional charge. Thank you. Go ahead. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask why in the, the letter that was sent out, there was no mention of the 18,000 people that needed to be polled. Uh, maybe we could have gone to a high school football game and had it there. Um, I'm not so worried about the increase as the, the people going through the trash and having no support from the police at all, no support from the DA. You call up, they say all we can do is tell them not to make a mess. They're going through your trash. I've seen three-year-old kids get put into a trash can, pulling out cans and, and bottles, and, and which is obviously covered with bacteria. You know, the, the lid from a, a can of green beans is as sharp as a razor knife. So we're looking at child endangerment. We're looking at they're entering confined spaces. So who knows what kind of gases could be in there? Somebody put chlorine in there. Who knows? Um, all this money they're making is tax-free. Uh, not to mention, I could have uh, letters in there, something that some junk mail that somebody sent, and now they've got my identity. Uh, there's a bigger issue going on than just raising the rates of trash. We need the support from you people to get on the put pressure on the DA whoever it takes to get them out of our trash cans so that our community doesn't look like a dump because people are pilfering through it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Scott Schroeder or Schroeder? Schroeder? Hi, my name is Scott Schroeder. I live on 95 to Orangewood. I think it's a damn shame that the city council who we represent, who's supposed to represent us, the 38,000 people, can't represent us now. That's a shame. You guys can vote on $300 million, damn loan. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll refi that. But you guys do not have the authority to sit there and represent 38,000 people on trash rates. That's a shame. You know, because some, it's a dog and pony show, that's all this is. You know, we do a recycling. We try, we, you tell us recycle. You guys put out recycle. Go green. It's going to offset our costs. Yet, here, the, look at this magic number, 40,000. Copper goes up every day. Aluminum definitely goes up. You know, everybody drinks a soda, beer, whatever. We all throw our aluminum cans diligently in the trash. It's over $2 a pound now. We're trying to recycle to do our part. Yet the trash company gets to keep all that money, but they give you $40,000. That's not so bad. You know, and then I got some other things. I got some questions. You know, the trash cans, is it property of the Garden Grove Sanitation Department? That's what mine says. That's our department. That's our own. You know, and it's illegal to steal from the city. Last time I checked, I can't go out and take a, take a tree out of here and dig it up take it home. You know, I'm sure the, the police would arrest me. For stealing government property, you know, city property. I'm sorry. You know, but we'll, we'll let them do it. You know, when I call the police and say we got people going through the trash, I had a guy at three o'clock yesterday morning. I almost hit because he's going through the trash across the street. I didn't see him. I had to swerve out of his way because he's going through the trash. But I cannot call the city for help because the police department won't do nothing. You know, we got people pushing, you know, shopping carts through the city. The police got to see them. I mean, they got to have 20-20 vision, I think, to be a cop. And they drive past these people pushing shopping carts. I've seen them up on the corners with all their aluminum recyclers getting picked up by trucks. They're farming this work out. We're losing revenue for this city. You know, there's nothing wrong with spending $20,000 for free concert. 
but how come we're not getting anything increased when the, when the price is going up? You know, I mean, gas goes up, i got to pay more. Copper goes up, we should be getting something. Aluminum goes up every time. We should be getting something out of this. And we're not. Because they got this magic number, 40000 that they'll throw out. We'll, we'll give it up to $40,000. The rest will pocket. You know, and that's a shame. And the question is, since these, the trash cans are the property of the Garden Grove Sanitation Department, if somebody gets hurt in a trash can, you know, child's in there going through the trash, you know, getting cans, he cuts himself. Who do they sue? Do they sue me? Do they sue the city? You know, I don't know. It's a good question to ask. You know, we could pick up the recycle earlier, but we have a police department that, that drives around this city. I think they drive around. I hope they drive around to enforce all our laws. You know, but when we call them, we can't get any help. So we either need to either enforce our laws or get away from them. You know, we can have anarchy or we can have laws. But we're, we're doing trash. We're doing our part. We're doing our recycle. We're doing our yard trimmings. We're doing everything that we're supposed to be doing to help out. But the city's not helping. And you guys can't even represent us. And that's a shame. I mean, it's just a dog and pony show. Because... The decision's already been made. Thank you. Thank you. Shirley Mason. Good evening, everyone. My name is Shirley Mason. I live in Garden Grove and have for several years. First of all, I just love that little tiny blurb under the Garden Grove section saying, oh, there's going to be a trash uh, thing for the public to, to, to talk about. Boy, why isn't it, why didn't you tell us that we need 18,000 signatures or people writing in? I'd like to have known it. I would have written it. Nobody tells you anything. Also, I wonder how many people here or on the council or over there read the article in Sunday's paper, register paper, about the public agency's propriety, propriety called into question because it concerns the waste management group. Back, I wonder how many of you know this, that back in... 1991, the waste management, a waste hauler that was issued tax-exempt bonds in 2001 to buy, tax, to buy garbage trucks for Orange, Riverside, and San Diego counties, gave 15000 to become a league partner in 2007 and contributed an, at least another 20000 to a league political committee from 2005 to 2007. Why? I ask you, do you remember that? Why were you given free bond money that we paid for, you, the taxes you didn't have to worry about? Well, how about checking into that? Because it's a rotten, stinking thing that's going on. This was on page 14 and on page 15 of last Sunday's paper. Now, I know it looks like an, quite a long article, but it behooves us to find out what the heck is going on in this, in this county. And it's not very nice. And in this state, because they are taking us down the river to oblivion. And I mean that. There's agencies that, that don't have to answer to anybody. Not to the state, not to anybody. They're a free agency going their own way. Much as a lot of government. Now everybody knows, and they've known for some time, that these fees are just a way of getting around Prop 13. They are calling them fees. That's some nice little guy in his office that's a lawyer or something. 
Oh, let's call them fees. Then we can uh, up things and get, get more money. Well, okay, you're doing it, but it's wrong. And I concur with almost everything that everybody, even Bob, he needs a little help with his style. But above and beyond that, most everything that everybody, I concur with because they're right. And it is a shame that the, that the I, I'm surprised, I shouldn't be, but I am, that, the, that you have nothing to say about whether they can go ahead and up the fees, and they are fees, and have nothing to say about it. Well, I think something can be done about it. I think maybe you could get yourselves a little more, uh, a little more say-so. A few more laws that says, no, you're not going to do that to us. You are not going to raise it, and I have no, we have nothing to say. We represent Garden Grove people. I hope you do. So find a way to get to these people that are nothing but bloodsuckers, and I'm sorry that's how I look at you. So God bless you all, and uh, God bless all the, all the veterans. That's something that should be thought about, and I know has been this last week. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to close oral communications. Uh oh. I don't know. Where's your card? Did you did you do two cards, Peggy? Okay, come on up here. I'll, okay, and then uh, you're next. Anybody else? If you fill out a card. <laughs> Well, basically speaking, a lot of the things I had to say, I assumed, oh, I'm Peggy Bergen from Garden Grove, 30-year resident last month. Anyways, but I assumed that most of the thing, you would have some say and there would be a vote and you probably would hopefully say no or we will postpone it until a later date. But basically speaking, in 2004, I was a working woman. My husband was a working woman. Since then, I have now become a widow. And I did finally qualify to become a Social Security widow, even though my husband had been dead over a year. So I am now living on roughly one, less than one-third of when we were working. So my, my income is quite different. So that isn't, it doesn't even really worry me, because no offense, 44 cents a billing or a week, I can kind of handle that, you know what I mean? I won't go to Starbucks and put, I, you know, whipped cream on my drink or something. But the whole point is, is that when we signed up for it, because I went to all the little meetings they had about, you know, you know, recycle Garden Grove and all this. We were $36 and something for three months then. Now we're 56 or 59 or something. But um, the point was that if we recycled and we followed the guidelines and we got our rates up to what our, our, our percentages should be, sooner or later our rates would either be reduced or they would be totally eliminated because of the recycling. Now, I do know my son recycles. He doesn't recycle the beer bottles because he says it's not enough for the heaviness. But whenever he goes, he's, he gets 50 to $60. So he's buying plants for my backyard, and my backyard is quite attractive now. But it just seems to me that you're told when you, you, you join in this that the rates will go down. No, they're going up. I understand gas. I can understand all that because I... I just used my Garden Grove Pride $25 gift certificate and it barely put a hiccup in my car. But, um, you know, I, I wonder, you know, these are fees. I don't care if they're called rates or whatever they call them. They are fees. And you know what? We had a Boston Tea Party that was addressed this type of a thing. I am a citizen. I have no say in it. We were never told in this letter. We were never told in the article in the newspaper. We needed a majority of the citizens, of which would be over 18,000. It was come and come and speak your piece at a hearing, a public hearing. Any other public hearing that I've been paying attention to since 19, uh, 2003, when I've started to follow the government here, was that then there was a vote. I mean, this is like a joke. Thank God, Dancing with Stars is over. I would have missed it for this. You know what I mean? But Somewhere along the line, we can't keep paying 40 cents more there, here. 40 cents, 50 cents, a dollar. It's only a dollar. But you know how many t only a dollars make up real money? It just, just seems so stupid to even have this. 
And who signed a contract with someone that if they decide they're going to change the rates, they can just do it. I didn't. When I sign a contract, I go and circle all the percentages and what happens if you miss a payment or God knows whatever else. Or if they default, they'll take my car or whatever. Someone had to sign a contract with them to say, yes, whenever you decide you want to change the rates, you just go ahead and do it because we will never get 18,000 uh, signatures. We'll never get 18,000 people here. I mean, do you guys read anything? No. You know, so I mean, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm saying that rhetorically. I do know that all the paperwork you guys go through is a nightmare in hell that I wouldn't even want on myself. And it's quite boring, most of it. But, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, you guys are supposed to be up there to say, hey, could you hold off on this? Now, like, like one of the, our citizens said, in, I think it was Robin, in July, we're having another 20% increase. My water bill averages $128 for two months. I've got a big yard and a green grass. Now it's going to go up to what's uh, one-fifth of that? That's going to be another uh, 1250 or so. I mean, I certainly won't be able to go to afford to go to the movies or anything now. But, you know, watch what you sign. And say that this has to be put to the vote of somebody. Any, I thought any increase to your household expenses had to be voted on. That's why we went through that nightmare of three weeks or whatever when we had the water thing. I always thought that was something that had to be voted on, that you couldn't just raise somebody's rates. I mean, I I'm not, don't have the liberty to say, I'm going to call ABC trash disposal and pick up my garbage. I'm not going to call Midway City and say, hey, guys, can you bring over the, your truck? You know, I'm stuck with what I've got. Granted, you guys do a fairly good job. I will say that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Harry Pierce. Am, am uh, as bewildered as the rest of you about the fact that we didn't have the opportunity or we get the realization that you needed all these protests to cancel this thing. I wonder if we really got due process here. Uh, it says in this notification that until this hearing tonight, you can protest. Well, I for one, add one more protest, my house, to, to your, that's going to do any good. But I'm wondering if we might not uh, delay this thing uh, until another council meeting to give people an opportunity to protest this thing. I don't know that you'll get 18,000, but symbolically it, it, it might help. It, it, it seems crazy to me. Thank you. Thank you. Rose, Alex, is that the last name? I'm not sure. Rose? Okay. Good evening. My name is Rosemary Alex, and uh, Councilman Rosen, Rosen, you opened the discussion discussing Prop 218, and you told the people that the majority is needed to make a change in this. And I guess I come here to ask a question, but first to make a statement. I represent the commercial world out there who pays about $45, in some cases $50 a day, to pick up trash. That's a very expensive and outrageous charge that is charged back to these people here, these consumers, of course, $45 a day to pick up trash. And my question goes back to the point that you, you mentioned. The cost is charged by Termina Industries, which is a subsidiary of Republic doing business as Garden Grove Disposal. If I'm not mistaken, Termina Garden Grove Disposal Republic is a privately held, held company. If that's the case, would that company be subject to the laws under the jurisdiction of Proposition 218. So. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to close your communication. I guess so, yeah. Go ahead. You know, I, I wasn't here at the last council meeting, but I watched some of the reruns, and the council meeting ended before 8 o'clock, so the meetings go a lot faster when I don't speak, but I'm going to speak anyway. Uh, just a couple of random points. I, I, the last speaker, um, Mrs. Alex, made the point that uh, Terramina is a private, a private business. They're entitled to make a profit. Uh, they're trash haulers. And um, because they make, uh, when, when they get a franchise like this, 
uh, the contracts are of long duration because they have to go out and buy all the trash trucks, which are very expensive, and they need a long-term franchise in order to uh, cover the capital cost of the investment of, of um, getting all the trash trucks. If they don't have the franchise, they don't go out and buy the trash trucks. If they do get the franchise, they have to make sure they have enough trucks to service the uh, city that they're servicing. Uh, and um, contracts like this, where the rate increases are tied to the consumer price index, um, usually that's a good deal for the city because they don't get uh, exorbitant fees. They simply cover their costs. And I suspect in the current e economic environment where uh, gas is so expensive that um, if they get a CPI increase that doesn't give adequate weight to the cost of gasoline, they're probably getting uh, less than the increase of their own costs uh, because, you know, they're trucks. They have to drive. You know, you see them circling all our neighborhoods. They use a lot of gasoline. So to that extent, the limitation to the consumer price index is probably uh, works to the city's advantage. Uh, this particular contract was entered into, I suspect, around 1995. It was before Mayor Dalton and I went on the council. Uh, and I think it's about, about 1995 because that's when the Garden Grove Community Foundation got started. And as Mr. Flores pointed out, there's certain provisions in the contract which um, have uh, required contributions to the Garden Grove Community Foundation. Uh, and those are the provisions I don't like. I don't think that compelled charity where the city and the council at that time insisted that the trash hauler make annual contributions to the foundation and to other charities, that's not really charity because that's the city forcing them to compel to give charity. And I would be opposed, if I was voting fresh on this, I'd be opposed to that. If, if somebody wants to give a charitable contribution, that's fine, but city politicians shouldn't force people to give to charities. Uh, the final thing I wanted to say, I wanted to answer Robin's question, why is it called solid waste? because trash is solid waste compared to um, what I guess I would call liquid waste, which is what goes into your toilet and out the sewer system. And the Garden Grove Sanitary District covers um, trash hauling and it covers the sewer system, so one is solid waste and the other isn't. That's it. Any other comments? No, you know, realistically, I, okay, I, I would just venture, realistically, I don't know how many routes they have, but I'm sure they don't have a truck for each route. And, um, well, I don't, but then it would probably, the, the time frame and to cover the whole city, I, I don't think would be available. Well, I, that's, okay, go ahead. You, you want to make a comment? Yeah, how much longer is this contract? This contract goes to uh, 2014. And uh, this is a question for the um, city attorney. Are there any alternatives to um, or anything that the council can do? Um, also, back to Mr. Harry Pierce's question. So that's question number one. Number two is, uh, can we have more time for the notice? Well. As far as the agreement uh, between the city and Garden Grove, or excuse me, the Sanitary District and Garden Grove Disposal goes, um, that agreement does not provide for any earlier termination provisions. Um, it provides for a notice to be given if termination is desired um, for 2014. And it will continue every year after that until a termination notice is given. So. From a, from a strictly contractual standpoint, um, without a breach of the agreement, and my understanding is that Garden Grove Disposal has been in compliance with their agreement, that there would be no termination option uh, prior to 2014. Um, 
Sep separate and a. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Everybody, we give everybody their fair chance to speak, please. I apologize, Council Member Wynn. Uh, could you restate your second question? Uh, can we have more time for the notice? Well, the, the notice is provided by Proposition uh, 218. It's a 45 day notice. That notice was given. It does not mean that if the Council, or excuse me, the Board desired to, they couldn't extend that period of time further. Um, but that would be within your discretion. I have another question regarding the notice. Was it proper notice if the people receiving the notice does not know the consequence of not protesting? Um, for instance, having the majority protested? The notice met all of the requirements of Proposition 218. It was in full compliance with the law. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? You know, no, I don't want to get into a dialogue. <clears throat> you know, we, we gave everybody the opportunity. You know, it is difficult. Um, yeah, well, it's easy to sit back there and throw rocks. And I said that before. Before I ran for council, or when I ran for council, I was back there throwing rocks. Well, now I'm up here dodging rocks. And there is a difference. And, you know, it's not fun. We don't, believe me, we don't sit at home and say, okay, tonight we get to raise rates. No, well, let's be fair, okay? But the point is, I mean, everybody out here is either a working person or a retired person, but someone that has worked. I doubt very seriously if any of you have worked at a job for years and years and not received some kind of an increase. You know, I'm not sticking up for the trash company, but I'll tell you this. I'd hate to be in their shoes now with the price of gas the way it's gone. If you're watching television, American Airlines is going to charge $15 for the first suitcase if you're flying. Uh, Blue, what's Jet Blue is charging $12 for the second one. I mean, everything is going up. You know, whether the oil crisis, you know, we can all point fingers, but the point is none of us like it any more than you do. And it is really difficult. Um, whoever negotiated this contract, you know, we can look at it and say, fine, it's got X number of years to go, and maybe we would have done it differently. But the point is, a contract is a contract. And what we're living in, we can't break it. You know, it, it is so difficult. Just like you talk about uh, people going through the trash. Um, you know, you almost have to have the trash police to be out there, quite frankly. And again, that's other costs. That's higher, higher cost to every one of us. Um, under Prop 218, if any of you, and I recognize many of you that come to the council meetings, but some of you I've never seen before. I've never seen at a council meeting. But if you watched it or you were here, for several weeks I was telling you when the um, Orange County Sanitation District was going to raise your rates. They raised them over a period of five years, 61%. You may not even notice that until you get your property tax bill and then realize that it's gone up. And out of 3 million people that were noticed in the county to go and appeal it or protest or whatever, they had less than, they had about 1,500 protests, 1,500 out of over 3 million. And most of them were not even um, in-person protests. They were writing a letter or asking, does this mean this? A lot of those 1,500 weren't. Charles Mitchell is one of two people that live in the city of Garden Grove that went to that hearing to protest it. I think we had either four or six people that did it in writing. Uh, it's easy to say we should be noticed again. We should have this. They should have told us. Well, if you read it, you knew it was going to be an increase, and you knew it was a protest hearing because it said that. Um, again, none of us like this because every one of us lives in the city of Garden Grove because every one of us pays the same increases that you pay. You know, if I let you speak, then I've got to let him speak. And, and Okay, I'll give you one. Okay, one. Go ahead. You know, no, the point is, what makes you, what make, wait, let me ask you this, what makes you different than your neighbor who's not here? You were concerned. Well, my neighbor is 77 years old and gets run water. Your neighbor could have done a written protest just like many people did. No, 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 but you see what I'm saying? I mean, 
and, and I'm not trying to pass the buck back to you, but I'm saying that it's very, very difficult when you have a small portion of people that are here when, uh, you know, we're not trying to skip around Prop 218. We're, not, we're doing it the right way. We're doing it the legal way that's required. Now, we may not like the results. We may not like the process. You know, and if not, then, then we should work to change the process. But the point is, that's the process that's in place now. And, you know, it's up to each one of us. You know, there are so many people that we see over the years that come to a council meeting for a one-issue item. You know, and I wish they could be here more often. I wish that they could see what we try and do here. You know, these people over here took a lot of unfair hits tonight. But I'll tell you something. These people are here tonight. They're not being paid to be here. You know, well, you should. You know what? You shouldn't expect to be paid because you're protesting you something. Okay. Well, the point is, I apologize to all of you for any hits you took because you didn't deserve it. No, they didn't deserve it. I'm getting hit trash truck. I'm getting out and recycled. Okay. Well, whatever you want to do. Okay. In any event, um, I'm not apologizing. No, you know what? Okay. Next time, read it so you understand what the whole thing was. All right. Okay, you know, Gus, the gentleman, you know, if he wants to speak, I'll let him speak. But, uh, again, you know, we don't need the finger pointing and yelling and blaming everybody else. Uh, well, if it makes you feel better, that's fine, but I don't think it really accomplishes anything. All right. Um, can, I, can I just say, no you, you know what, I'm going to let you ask that question. You bet. Do you want to address it? Well, go ahead. When I called AJ up, I talked about the people going to the trash and all the agency got their older right guy. Uh, I just thought it was a percentage. And if it's a flat $40,000, that would be curious because if it's a percentage, we should be getting more back specifically. Actually, the 40000 has nothing to do with yeah. the recycling. See, that's a, yeah. Yeah. The city doesn't get a percentage back on the recycle? Because I know I used no. to know people that weren't disposable. Well, yeah, yeah but you yeah, but I don't think you want to talk about orange disposal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, I'll just leave it at that. All right. Okay. Uh, well, let's go to the next item, 4A. Oh, Mr. President. Yeah, oh, I beg your pardon. We need a – excuse me. Go ahead. Mr. President and Sanitary District members, at this time I would like to enter into the record the following information. The City Clerk's Office, as of 5.30 p.m. on this date, received a total of 78 written protests. Since 5.30 p.m. today, an additional two written protests were received. There are 38,164 parcels affected by the rate increase. As a result, there has not been a submittal of a majority protest. Okay, thank you. Uh, 4A. Mr. President, 4A is an award of contract for Cardinal Sewer Sewer Improvement Project, and Keith Jones is here to give a brief staff report. Thank you. Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, there's a section of 8-inch sewer main that currently runs under the state 20, SR-22 freeway, uh, a few blocks from west of Harbor Boulevard, ending at Trask that is in need of repair. The improvement consists of approximately 827 feet of uh, vitrified clay pipe. It needs to be replaced. Uh, we had eight qualified bids were received, and the lowest qualified bidder was CGI Construction. They've met all the requirements. And this is in full compliance with the community vision. Therefore, it is recommended that the uh, Garden Grove Sanitary District award contract to CGI Construction, incorporated for $536,159, reject all other bids, and finally authorize the general manager and secretary to execute agreement on behalf of the Sanitary District. Thank you. Any questions for staff? I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Call for the vote. Motion received for yes votes. Okay, I'll adjourn this uh, sanitary district. We'll go back to council. Get Mr. Mayhem. Yes. The vote was to just file the report. Or what was the vote for? Well, there, was, there was no vote. There's the no vote, vote was on the uh, no action. sewer project. No action. The sewer project, okay. Yeah. No action. Okay.